reality is I don't like to talk about uh, my art somehow. But if people ask questions, sure, I'll try to answer. And sometimes it even gives you ideas, you even answer things you haven't even thought about. So there's basically three steps. You do your painting, it's a selfish thing. You, you want to see something, so you just do it for yourself in a way. And then the painting has to be shown somewhere in the gallery or something to become really a painting because then you can see what it is. Because in the studio, it's a bit confusing. You don't even know what you do really. And the third step is when you have an exhibition, it's an exhibition in a museum and, and, and it's a different concept you know that other people are going to see it. So then, then you try to make something that held as an exhibition. I was kind of interested in, I don't know, literature or poetry in the beginning when I was a student. And I saw a show in, in Switzerland, in Bern, with Rauschenberg, Jones, Leslie, and uh, Stankiewicz. And Rauschenberg, I said, well, this is art. For me, it was amazing. If you can do these things and that's art, it means you can do anything. There are so many moving parts to this exhibition. One of the things that Olivier Mosse is known for is his large-scale murals. These professionals are here to do it according to his plans. We're not just painting, we're running chalk lines and doing elevations and stuff like that. Once we get it going, it's not gonna take very long. It, it's pretty simple. I hope they really like it. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> What's unique about this exhibition that I have ever witnessed is this is the first time when it installed this week that even he had seen the works installed and finished. They couldn't be shown or even photographed or realized until they came into this huge space. I used to be the general manager for an art store here locally, and he used to be our client. So he would come in and buy rolls of canvases uh, 12 feet long. They hired me to, to uh, stretch a 21-foot uh, painting for Olivier. We had to build a frame from scratch. We put it into three pieces in order for it to be transported. And then we put it together here, and then we started stretching the, the painting. It is a little unusual to do a solid color. I mean, it's not just a solid color. It had texture, it had some vibrancy on it. I really started to do monochrome painting when I was in New York. And I think it was much easier to do that in New York than in France or in Paris, because in Paris, Yves Klein was, had a presence that that was monochrome, okay? So it had been done. In New York, it was a little more subtle because monochrome was more like painting. We talked about it and he said, I'd like to have the yellow wall that's in the National Gallery of Canada. And you would say, well, why would you need permission? Just paint a yellow wall and call it a mosé. It had to be that piece because that's the idea, the concept behind it is the question of authorship and the question of what is an artist? What really constitutes being an artist? Everything is painted. The walls are painted, the cars are painted. If you decided it's art, well, it's art. Now you need to have somebody else to believe it's art, and then it really becomes art. Because it has been shown in a museum, and then it was sold to the, the National Gallery of Canada, then it becomes really an art piece, and, and, and that's what makes it art. But it's just a yellow wall. <laughs> so he got what he wanted. This is an official piece owned by the National Gallery of Canada. Of course, it's not going to be rolled up or scraped off and sent back, but we have permission to use it for the duration of this exhibition. If I could just quickly have everybody's attention, because I know we want to get inside the galleries to see, of course, Olivier's exhibition. So tonight we celebrate, of course, the opening of Olivier Mosse. 
In this exhibition, viewers will experience an extensive presentation of Mosé's iconic monochrome canvases, minimalist site-specific works, and objects rooted in Dada's impulses. Uh, I don't want to say anything, but I, I have, of course have to thank <laughs> the people who made that possible, Jeremy, Julie, and all the people who installed the work. And uh, I'm kind of excited to see what it is, and we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Olivier. What you see is, is what you see. And it's difficult to define that. Language has limitation on this. There's a kind of visual way to communicate certain things, and, and that's what I'm interested in. There's a lot to be said about just allowing yourself to see and to respond on a very primal level, and that's what minimalism can do. It's also a way to respect the viewer. He has to see what, what's presented, but I'm not going to tell him what it is or what he can, what kind of feeling he has to have. I respect him enough to know that he can dismiss the whole thing, but well, that's his position. I mean, I don't mind. I thought, I need to understand this. It's just too simple. It can't possibly, there's something I'm not getting. And the more I read, the more I thought, no. It, it, there is no magic bullet or deep reading. You can keep reading on if you'd like, but it's not necessary. And this show also is interesting because, I, as I said, we change a couple of shapes of these works, and now there's a white panel on a white wall that I kind of discovered, and I like that because I looked at it and I said, there's something interesting. Anybody can paint a white panel, so these things are possible. And this is a little bit the, the, the idea when, when you talk to students. You can do whatever you want to do. I have a certain respect for the, the, the object itself. And even if I like cars or, or motorcycle, I kind of have a relationship with that. Mosé is not saying that his motorcycles are his art. They're in the show because they inspire him, they motivate him. They're very much a part of how he thinks about his work. You don't want to mess up with them. I mean, they have their own identity. If it's an interesting motorcycle, you park it in the street, people look at it. <laughs> and so there's something interesting about that. There's an aesthetic aspect in, in the vehicle. Well, I met somebody, uh, Elizabeth, who was working in a gallery in Germany, and she was from Tucson, and born in Tucson, raised in Tucson. I knew them. Elizabeth Cherry and Olivier, when they had just settled here, and uh, Elizabeth had a gallery on Grant Street. I went to all the openings. It was the hip place to be. Okay, danke schön. Bon appétit. An artist of that caliber, being out here in cowboy boots, riding a motorcycle, was very much a part of, you know, my romantic visions of the West. There's a, a point where I had the feeling I don't need to be in the center, and maybe this center don't exist anymore. You could be anywhere. Here you can ride a motorcycle without a helmet. There's, <laughs> the weather is kind of hot, but nice. So this was all part of it. Maybe it's because of the painting I was doing that I moved to Tucson instead of the other way around. I, I don't know. I actually thought that maybe the museum was maybe too remote for him. I mean, it was showing all over Europe and, and in New York. I realized soon that he really believed in participating in a community. We're at the Tucson Museum of Art, and we're in the courtyard where they have set up a nice ice wall. We have special machines that make these 40 by 20 by 10 inch blocks, and each block weighs 300 pounds. I had done some ice sculpture before. The first one was done in Switzerland, up in the mountain, and we got a chunk from the glacier, which today I don't think we could do that anymore. But I'm still grateful that people are, you know, they open, you do 
a wall in ice, well, some people are ready to go along and do it. Every day out there was like working on a Saturday. <laughs> Olivier is extremely easygoing. He is very, very cooperative and flexible, and it's been a lot of fun. Artworks are also interesting because they basically done to be looked at. So then you make the effort and you really look at that. You can enjoy looking at things, but it's also a way to think about what they are. I think it reminds us that everything is in a state of change. And looking at the ice, which is, you know, when we first looked at it earlier today, it was opaque because of all of the frost on it. And slowly that frost burnt away and revealed a clear block. And as we keep looking at it, now we can see water dripping from it. And so this, there's a transformation that's going on. It, it reminds us of life, I guess. There's no right, there's no wrong. One of the uh, prompts for this exhibit is to stand in front of one of Mosé's work for 60 seconds and do nothing and just see what happens. The idea is to experience what you experience and be okay with it. My goal is to just open that up what do you feel? What do you see? Starting with really basic stuff, but it's amazing how quickly you can go from what colors do you see or what does blue make you feel to something much more significant. Even though it's slowly melting away, it just makes you think like to enjoy little things in life because nothing, nothing is permanent. I think art helps you to look at things which are not the thing themselves. And that's also what I said about my painting. It's a way to look at, at other things. And, uh, and, and who knows, after seeing the ice piece here, you have the scotch and you look at your glass and say, oh, <laughs> you know, that's what they are. Art is still something you have to look at.